Hello internet, your friendly neighborhood gremlin here, and today we're going to do an interior build. Can you tell that I'm avoiding the exterior stuff because I'm scared? Because I am. <laughs> Putting off the forest and things because I do not know how I'm going to do it. And so we are instead going to build the interior of Sleeping Beauty's house. Even though we do not have the animal who's going to play Sleeping Beauty, and we're just using Ace's house. Mostly just because it's in the right place, and then maybe we can do the exterior next time? Or I don't know, we'll do something else. The original plan, which is why I'm wearing the dress that I'm wearing, is that I was going to do Fauna and Belle, but I went into her house and it does look magnificently like it works for Belle, and I didn't want to change it because I get a little bit attached sometimes, all of the time. <laughs> so her build is going to stay the same, because that is the human that I am. We use the summit wall there to sort of signify that she's high up in the air, in like a tower. I don't know why, the tower is not integral or even a part of all Sleeping Beauty stories. Sometimes she's just in like a country house or something. It's not important, but it was a thing that I wanted and it was a thing that we got. And also we used jail bars around the bed because I thought, I don't know, maybe to protect her, which she could certainly use in some versions of the story. Like when, um, she wakes up with two children because that's a thing that happens sometimes in Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Not in like the like the Grimm's Brothers one, they just do the true love's kiss. And Charles Perrault, he sort of wakes her up and then they consensually, you know. But uh, there are versions where she just wakes up because the child was looking stuck on things and sucked on her finger and got the flax out. But we can kind of get into all of that when we do the exterior build and I talk you through the fairy tale because I figured it'd be better to do that in a longer build than this one, which is small and short. I didn't want to rush it, but we do go just like a little bit nutty. We add a vine for whimsy and just because I kind of wanted to. And then the like suit of armor just sort of makes it castle-y. Potentially, probably not, but also that's what we're saying. We have the bones because she's been there a long time. I don't know, in most of the stories where the people fall asleep with her, they just sort of fall asleep and don't die. But I wanted bones, and so I have bones. It could be like one of the princes who tried to get into her and died in the thorns because they won't let anybody through until the right guy comes along and then they just kind of open and let him in. Not sure how they decided on which guy was the right one, but uh, apparently they picked the right one because she falls in love. So I guess they're doing their job. You keep it all sort of like medievally. We only use candles to light the room, and I'm actually going to take out the other side window there later because I want it to be darker. I suppose the last like important thing we put in is that spindle because obviously it just felt integral to the Sleeping Beauty story. And then I add a gnome. I don't really know why I add a gnome. Maybe he could be like one of the fairies or something. Better choice may have been custom designed fairies, but instead we've got gnomes. But this is indeed the end of the build. So if you liked the video or just had a good time hanging out with me, you could hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on Sleeping Beauty, the build, literally anything at all. And of course, if you think you might like to do this again sometime, you can hit that subscribe button. But I will see y'all on Tuesday. Goodbye.